Hi, I'm Erin Lundy. And I'm Madeline Walden, and this is Aquarium, Aquarium of the Pacific, a podcast brought to you by Aquarium of the Pacific, Southern California's largest aquarium. Join us as we learn alongside the experts in animal care, conservation, and more. Welcome back to Aquarium of the Pacific. I'm Erin Lundy, Conservation Coordinator for Mammals and Birds and Animal Care Specialist. And I'm Madeline Walden, the Aquarium's Digital Content and Community Manager. Erin, what are we going to learn about today? (laughs) Today we are highlighting our newest gallery here at the Aquarium and some of the work that went into that new gallery. So two departments that I don't think people often think about when you are building something at an aquarium are not really directly animal related, but also in the sense really are animal related. Very important. Yeah. (laughs) And so we are talking to Mike Davis, who works in our facilities department, and they sort of work with maintaining a lot of the integrity of our infrastructure. And then we're also going to be talking to Reed Edwards, who works in our life support department, which really is exactly what it sounds like. Supporting life at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Exactly. They (laughs) help build and plumb and, Mm -hmm. you know, really maintain the systems the way that they're supposed to. And that's a team who's here 24-7. Yeah. Yeah, Mm -hmm. they're here a lot. Yeah, they're here always watching. So we're really lucky that we get such an inside look at sort of what goes into it beyond just the animal component of it, because we've talked a lot about animals this Mm -hmm. season, but we haven't talked too much about all the other things that go into making an aquarium work. So Mike break, or no, he does not break anything. Mike fixes everything that I break, and actually, Reed is the one that I call to help me fix the other things that I break, (laughs) as they relate more to our animal care things. So So. we have two entire departments dedicated to things that Aaron breaks. Yeah, absolutely. I really sound like I'm the worst employee. (laughs) This whole season, I'm like, I didn't know how to dive when I started, and now I break everything, and everyone's going to have to fix everything around me. And now you host a podcast. And now I host, they Mm -hmm. just put me in a room. They're like, just talk. Just put her, sit her down somewhere. (laughs) You can't break anything in this pad room when you're talking um so yeah that's that's me it's a little bit about me um but this episode is going to be about mike and reed and sort of some of the work that went into the socal gallery and reimagining that new gallery that has not been redone since 25 years Mm -hmm. ago and also a little background on what else they do around here let's get into it ready ready (laughs) ready (laughs) ready All right. Well, thank you so much, Mike, for joining us. And do you want to tell us a little bit about what your job is? What's your title? And how long have you worked here at the aquarium? Oh, well, thanks for having me. Um, by the way, people, my name is Mike. I do everything. <laughs> it's true. Um, it's true. I've been here for about 10 years now. I started in housekeeping, which is now environmental services, basically cleaning the place up. Mm-hmm. And I've been promoted I would say about four to five times to the point where now I am a level three tech and facilities building engineer. Um, I worked in security previous and I was a safety manager in security. And um, this place gives you opportunity if you are willing to put in the work for it. Um, If you either went to college or trade or any type of trade school and you can um, find a department that fits your skill level, more than likely they're happy to usher you in Mm -hmm. and build on your skills and make you become a better person than what you were. And me, I'm very energetic and greedy when it comes to learning new things, (laughs) especially when there are physical things like builds and um, computer automation controls and things of that nature. So I just jumped on it and I haven't turned around. Yeah, I think that um, Mike's basically saying he's done everything that there is to do here, Mm -hmm. and he continues (laughs) to do everything (laughs) that there is to do here. Yeah, you know, I I, I don't know how to say no just yet, and so my list of duties are um, skyscraper size at this point. (laughs) I never complete Mm -hmm. the list because Mm -hmm. I finished one just to add three, Mm -hmm. and... You know, it keeps my mind busy. It, it keeps me functioning, and it keeps everybody think that they're bothering me because I'm busy all the time. <laughs> but it's okay. There's big jobs and little jobs, and I found that when you knock out the little jobs, it makes everybody else um, feel good about doing their job because the little stuff be in their way. Mm-hmm. My yeah. big projects are not in other departments' way or um, things that they got to worry about, and so that's where I put my attention to. Um, I like to communicate. Uh, create that bridge between departments because if you get under you don't have to know how to do it but if you at least part of the process and you know what's going on time-wise 
um, you feel a little better about about things and not just in the dark. Yeah. Can you fix this? And I say yes. And then you don't hear anything else. And then you're just <laughs> wondering, so, hey, did Mike fix it? <laughs> <laughs> so I try to stay on point with the, those communications all the time. So That's awesome. Yeah. I think um, one of my favorite things is that every time I have a project or something that needs doing, I can go to you and be like, I have an idea, but I have no way to make it a reality. Like I haven't, I don't have the skill set to do something engineering wise to make my idea real. And without fail, every time you're like, oh, I know how to do that. Just give me a couple days. I'll get the materials. And you've like already ordered them somehow. Mm -hmm. And then like an hour later, it's fixed. (laughs) My live blueprints. (laughs) <laughs> um, without having it on paper, um, I like to go to the location and have conversation with the person and what mm-hmm. they want. And so as we're having this conversation, I'm drawing a blueprint up in my head. <laughs> um, I have like a catalog of materials that we have and what I can order. And by the end of the conversation, whether I built it before or not, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that I can't build it. And I usually will. And then I'll get it done sooner than the later. I mean, sooner is better for me. Uh, we have a process for big projects, but when they're little, I'd be like, just tell me and then send an email to all the bosses. <laughs> that way I can pre-prep parts, and by the time the bosses get to me, they like, you finished already? Yeah, like, yeah. Yes, I was, I, was, I was able to start <laughs> a little bit early, yeah. That's awesome. So can you tell us a little bit about the facilities department? What does the facilities department do? All right, the facilities department are the caretakers of the entire building. When it comes to heating, um, chilling, and all automation. Um, So the temperatures of the tanks are ran by our um, chill, our our chillers, which we have three major big chillers. We have air handlers on the roof. And so our air handlers control temperature in the air, but also contaminants in the air. Mm -hmm. It gets filtered out. Mm -hmm. Um, We have special filters to catch certain things. Um, Certain areas are more... Um, susceptible to things so they have HEPA filters Mm -hmm. and then other areas it's just particulate filters might not know what I'm saying but it's (laughs) but you know but we're we're keeping every environment its own environment Mm -hmm. and so we have northern pacific which is a different environment from tropical pacific Mm -hmm. you can just tell by the naming northern cold tropical warm (laughs) and so we have different things going on in that nature um all the plumbing and electrical in the whole building is our responsibility so if we have to do teardowns and rebuild, we do it all in-house, like mm-hmm. complete structures. Mm-hmm. Uh, we t- t- took down a whole building whose studs were wood, so it was rotted, mm-hmm. and took it to the ground. We got rid of it and built a whole new building in its place with more um, environmental stabi- uh, stable materials. Mm-hmm. And they left me over there for about two months. <laughs> and Mike, just figure it out. And there was no one to say, this is how you do it. <laughs> you uh, have to know how to I do it. I just have yeah. to get in there. I have to mm-hmm. like analyze what my problem is, see what my tools are available, and then just go mm-hmm. and go and go and go. And um, I have a good boss. His name is Tom. He 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 sees that when I'm looking at something and I'm silent, I'm calculating. Mm-hmm. And he'll tell people to leave me alone because I'm, <laughs> I'm in the Not mode now. Out. And then he'll tell them to watch. He'll tell we had a we have a big theater now, a new one, with very expensive camera. And they came to set it up. They thought they had what they needed to set it up. And then Tom just told me to come with him. He didn't tell me to do anything. And so I just go with him to watch these contractors put this, you know, high cost camera up. Mm-hmm. And they're there, they're looking around and they're looking up. And I tell Tom, how are they gonna get that up there? Tom says, I, I don't know. It's it's their job. Mm-hmm. And then I said, But look at Tom, look at so I'm pointing that stuff and Tom is looking at me and smiling. And I said, Hey Tom, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> And so I, I, I left and I just thought of what we have on site that could get this in position without no one getting hurt by doing it. Mm-hmm. And so the guys are sitting there staring. And then I said, I can get it up there. And so he's saying, so how are you going to do it? And then I get silent because I'm, I'm looking at everything. And then, hey, Tom, so what is he going to do? And he's like, shh, just watch. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, just watch. And then I, I, I come back with you know a, a crank. I re-stabilized the area where we're standing at, and I get it up there, and the guy turned around and said, what's your name? I was like, Mike. He was like, Mike, thank you so much. It was like I saved this day. That's <laughs> because... us every day. Thank well, you, Mike, thank so you, Mike. much. Oh, Mike. It'd be maybe, you know, different if we had a problem and we called an outside company, hey, can you come fix yeah. this problem? Versus someone that talks to the people that work here and knows the issues that they're facing every day and can design something so much more efficiently for our purposes. That's what I try to do, mm-hmm. like, the most. When I talk to the people I'm going to give it to, mm-hmm. I have my work order and what you're asking me to do. 
and then I talk to the people because I need to know why it was an issue in the first place. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so if I'm gonna build something new, I don't want to create the same problem you had before. Mm-hmm. And um, that'd be a waste of your time and everyone's I'll time. I'll be yeah. back again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be yeah. back again. That's amazing. And I try to do that um, most of the time. Just or if I do do a build, I walk a person through it mm-hmm. and explain to them why this is happening and why this is happening because mm-hmm. um, some people um, like if it's not what you do, it's certain things you just don't pay attention to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I pay attention to everything. Mm-hmm. I can't help it. Can't <laughs> it's your brain. We need your brain on stuff like that, especially somewhere you know where we have animals and there's there's different precautions that we have to take, and <sighs> yep. you know adds another layer of security to everything that we do. I have a question for you, Madeline. Me? I want you to think about this. Yes, while I give my answer <sighs> my to the same question. Favorite thing to do. <laughs> think what is the funniest thing that you've broken that Mike's had to fix? <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you, for me as recent memory yeah. was that I was leaning against one of the perimeter boards at our holding otter area and I was leaning on it to feed the otters and it snapped <laughs> in half <laughs> and I fully broke the entire, that part of our enclosure. <laughs> but I fully like broke this board and then turns out also broke what was holding the board up. And I just had to go explain to Mike <laughs> what, what just I happened? did. Um, and I and think, the second you open your mouth, he was blueprint. Yeah, he yeah. was like, well, I already fixed it. You know, like it yeah. basically was already done. But like, you know, then having to work together with these animals that are very curious about stuff and finding a way to get Mike into that area that was safe for him and mm-hmm. that the otters weren't stealing all your tools or doing whatever it is that otters like to do. We heard a lot about how mischievous they are. <laughs> and then just having that fixed like so immediately and having it. It's nice to have a resource like that where I'm like, yeah, I embarrassingly fell and broke everything. And please yeah, I remember me. now. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mike has helped thing. with things that are super important like that. And then something that's like pretty unimportant to our day to day is that we um, have our digital camera that we use for marketing purposes and it's locked up in a, in a drawer. And one day the lock just fully broke. Mm. and couldn't get to the camera <laughs> and I went up to Mike I'm like hey like you know this this I maybe I sent an email too because I am scared and I'm like I didn't break it I promise but <laughs> <laughs> here's the information you need to know and like it was fixed so quickly and like not only was it fixed the whole lock had to be replaced and like he got this new key and showed me how to n- use this new key and everything and you've just been great also you're very nice when I was harassing you the other day about the ice machine in the break room because <laughs> we have our um, the otters have one too this ice that's like it's the good ice if you know mm-hmm. what I'm talking about. It's the good ice. And I walk in, I see Mike messing with the ice machine. I'm like, wait, you're replacing it. Is it still going to be the good ice? And he's like, it's going to be even better. (laughs) And he's right. He improved the Mm -hmm. ice. Mm -hmm. More efficient ice. Oh, okay. The ice is efficient. (laughs) So from everything important to, you know, our animal safety and making sure Aaron doesn't fall through anything again to the ice Well, we don't know if we can make sure that. I may (laughs) fall through more things. What is something sort of unexpected about working in your department that some people might not realize is part of your job? Unexpected. I don't I don't think unexpected fits me because like I don't want to say no I just want more experience at everything. Mm. So unexpected will will be me taking over the job that they might have wanted a contractor to do but mm. they wasn't doing the job right or they did it and it wasn't what we need. So are we going to go back and forth with someone to get it right or can we take care of it in house? Sure. Can we get it to the level that husbandry needs it because mm-hmm. um, we can have stuff built by outsiders, mm-hmm. but they don't talk to husbandry. Mm-hmm. They don't know what can be dangerous to the animals Yeah, it's from simple glues and pipes. Um, and so that stuff, it happens all the time. So I guess it's unexpected, but I expect it. <laughs> you um, expect it. Um, because it's, it's just a realm that we're in. And I'm not saying somebody did a, a, a bad job, but they're not linked in with the education sure. department, um, with the dive locker rooms. And they asking more questions. So yeah, I ask a ton of questions. Yeah, I like the panoramic paint of a view of what's going on and keep it widescreen. Yeah, and then try and cover all the bases. I think it's funny. I know that there's been mornings where I'm in at 6 a.m. and I've seen you here like working on the Lurky Forest or something. And then there was night shifts where I'm here at 11 p.m. and Mike is fixing the floor mm-hmm. in the otter, the northern gallery. Well. The other question that we wanted to ask you about your position is, like, do you interact with the animals day to day in your job? Well, I have took in every opportunity to interact <laughs> with animals on a constant basis. Yeah. So I've been snorkeling with the sharks and rays in the trop tank. 
Um, I took a little boat out in the Shark Tank and Shark Lagoon so I can do work in the inside. You and took a boat out there? Yes, That's I had, cool. had me a little bitty boat. <laughs> and, and, and I had a, a rope on both sides pulling myself across the Ooh, tank. that's fun. While I was drilling in the wall and laying the stuff in there and cool. touched the shark when it swam by. <laughs> um, I fed the otters. Um, yeah. Me and the otters are like homies. Yeah. But we have a lot of new ones, so we got to kind of have a little one-on-one time. Yeah. Um, I flew our red tip hawk, our red tail hawk. Um, what here is your favorite animal? Yes, I am a Raptors guy. Yeah. And uh, not basketball team. <laughs> <laughs> and the penguins. The penguins are some of the funniest animals. Um, I had that, the greatest opportunity was when you have them in your lap and then they're poop on your shoe. Yeah, it's um, an honor. That's the greatest. It's, it's like that's 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 your ritual to, to get in, mm-hmm. to kind of be the cool guy with the penguin. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, other than that, everything is like, Everybody can go to the touch tank and, and like touch mm-hmm. rays or see anemones and sea slugs and things of that nature. But those particular things, the, the snorkeling, the the flying of the hawk, that's at the top of the list. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's so awesome. I love that. I love that, you know, we work in a place where I, I know I can personally take that for granted sometimes. You know, I have a stressful day or something's going on. And then, you know, I have to, like, remind myself, look at where you work. Walk out, and you can just go and stand in the tropical tunnel for an hour and just kind yeah. of reset a little bit. Or I can go and tell Erin, like, hey, I'm having a bad day. And she's like, come feed a sea lion. Come yeah. feed an axolotl. Yeah, exactly what I was yeah. going to say. You can mm-hmm. go up there and, and get and give handshakes with Parker. Mm-hmm. Who can go just give a handshake with Parker in the middle of the day? And it just, <laughs> yeah. just makes your We're day so feel lucky. better. You're so lucky. So I just fake that I have bad days all the time. Yeah. It feels She's bad like, for me. Aaron. Aaron. I think that's the coolest part. Like, there's so much community. And then I think that you work so hard to build relationships with all these people, too. And the only way that we ever feel like we can repay you is with, hey, here's some experience working with the animals. And for us, it feels like, you know, this is all we can offer you. But it's nice to hear that that is something that you look forward the to. The one thing day. I'm waiting to get to is some of the training. Oh, yeah, you want to train our animals? I want to do. Mike, you're the... stealing everyone's jobs out here. <laughs> <laughs> Contractors out yeah, of the way. Yeah, Everyone yeah. else out of the way. <laughs> training the sea lions. Training hey, the seals. You know what? I'm trying to use every second in the 24 hour clock. I only need three hours of it for sleep and then come right back in. But that's one of the things that I like when I watch it when they're doing the feeds with the sea lions and have them, you know, come back, go down, spot over here. And yeah, I just have a day. Do you have a favorite sea lion? Is it Parker? Um, it, it's me and Parker got this strange relationship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I went up there to take pictures with him before mm-hmm. on a birthday, and I have a full on beard. And it was when I had it nice and thick. Mm-hmm. You know, now Parker weighed about five times more than me. Parker got next to me. His whisker touched my beard. He stopped. He looked at me. <laughs> he was like, what the heck? <laughs> You supposed to have hair on your face? <laughs> he's like, I have hair on my face. And he's like, no, 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 no. And then he backed all the way up and he, he looked at me, shaking his head, like, no, 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 no. I was like, how did I go shave and come back? That yeah. was the that was that that was funny. Oh, that, that, that was that was funny. He's sensitive in the summertime. You know Although, who's also a cancer? Parker. Parker. Yeah, we're sensitive. sensitive. We're a sensitive group. Well, he he's turning twenty one this year, um, which is exciting for Parker in and of himself, mm-hmm. but. He goes through what's called rut during the summertime where he gets up to 850 pounds, I think is the biggest he's ever been, and then he gets really sensitive. That's and when, that's probably why he looks yeah. so huge. I'm in there, I'm like, Parker, you big. He is big in the Brother, summer. Brother, you're so big. <laughs> but because they go through this thing where they gain a ton of weight, and what they typically be doing is defending their territory mm. and fighting off other males and guarding their harem of females, and he doesn't really do any of that stuff here because it's just him and then some other males in the habitat. Mm-hmm. He doesn't seem to miss it, but he still goes through the hormonal fluctuation of gaining weight and then losing weight. So it's so easy for things to just kind of like make him get the ick, for lack of a Your better beard word. Touched yeah, my beard. Like, ah. <laughs> One like, time he literally. stepped on a little cut piece of herring and he like picked up his flipper and looked so horrified by it because it was all squished on his flipper and he looked <laughs> visibly shaken. <laughs> And he fully left, like went all the way to the water and would not come back. He was like, "Ew!" Get oh, that is How funny. How dare you? Put he gets a... the ick real bad. He does get the ick. That's like anybody that owns a puppy and walks around barefoot. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's what he experienced. <laughs> Poor guy. Poor Parker. You know what? I feel for him. So on your birthday, we'll see about getting you in a train to sea line. But maybe not Parker, since he's so. <laughs> well, I, I don't have the full on beard. That's true. You shaved. Okay. Mm-hmm. Maybe he'll be fine. This around. <laughs> so funny. Well, we did want to talk a little bit about we're reimagining one of our original galleries here at the aquarium, the SoCal Gallery for the first time since the aquarium's opened in 1998 for our 25th anniversary is being totally redone. 
And I know that there is a lot of planning that goes into it, not just from like the exhibit and, you know, tank design side of it, but also from the facilities and life support departments because we had to rip down walls to make that whole process start. So what was that like on your end? Um, It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot of, of work and it's, you would think the area is big, right? Okay, we have this big area mm -hmm. and so we can all come in here and just do our thing. But then you realize it's not as big as you thought. There's people working right next to people. So executing your plans and, and where you want to start is probably the most important thing. So that if one person is in one area, somebody else needs to be in another area. But what if you can't do your your part A without this part over here yeah. being done? Um, and so and then we have to take the plans that were by um, that we get from who designs everything, mm -hmm. and we have to make it work in the area. Um, some things are not covered, um, but we have to make it work regardless. Um, <laughs> some measurements are give or take. Um, we have lots of plumbing that's in the aquarium. Mm -hmm. So our pipes are coming out, out of everywhere and going everywhere. <laughs> and so you can lose space fast once you start getting up into the ceiling. Um, but we have to be on point to where none of that matters because we still got to find a way around that. We will hit a, a left, put an elbow, and plumb something around something mm -hmm. because there's no, we can't not plumb it. Mm -hmm. And so we, and we can't just remove this. <laughs> yeah, you know, we can't, this one doesn't, this one need, doesn't no need hot water. water. We'll just have it for show. It's okay. <laughs> and so even though there's a lot of plans and you have blueprints and where stuff goes, that's like 50% of the mm. battle. Mm -hmm. um, the other 50% is the actual putting it in place mm -hmm. and making it all work and making it functional but also making it safe um, and making it to where when we walk away from it, that husbandry can come in and they can do their job and they're not in danger. Mm -hmm. um, sound foundations, um, we are in California, so the earthquake thing is real. Mm -hmm. um, we would hate to put something up, have it shake, and then it starts cracking and the tank leans over. And yeah. yeah, I never Disaster. thought about like mm -hmm. seismic protect. Like how do we protect our tanks and you know acrylic structures and all those well, things against seismic activity the bigger the tank the better for itself okay um because um it's holding so much weight mm. and it's not sitting on a platform mm. they're sitting on on concrete okay um but then you got like our our what are the, what are the first tanks that's going to be in the new gallery when you first walk in the gobies no the focus tanks they're up and and so i have a fiberglass um frame for them to sit on mm -hmm. Reinforce the heaviest one with stainless steel, but they're all sitting on a real thick rubber pad that can mm. so, that can take the vibrations. Mm. And the tank is acrylic, and the acrylic and the rubber almost act like the glue. Mm. As long as there's no liquid in between, mm -hmm. it won't slide. Mm. Um, then you can put braces around the tank back to the wall, um, the same way you would do flat screen TVs if you put them high. <laughs> Uh, you're supposed to. Each of our tanks mm -hmm. is actually just a flat screen yeah. TV. <laughs> this is how you found out. <laughs> hey, I've seen an aquarium like that. <laughs> if you poke the actual acrylic, it just has that weird little that plasma thing. And you're like, what is that? <laughs> and like, so things like that come from us on our side. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when we get our plans, that's not included. But when the build is finished and you're looking like, okay, safety. So what if it shakes? Okay. Now add, add, add. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, and that could be for anything. Such a valuable resource is to have someone who's still, like I said, intertwined with everything and thinks of things like that. I think um, recently one of the things that I got to help participate in is moving our eelgrass tank into our SoCal Wonderful gallery. Wonderful time. <laughs> It was a lot of work, but one of the funniest parts of it is that it's just like this. It almost felt like this ragtag team of people working mm -hmm. together to find a way. So this tank is brand new. You guys are going to see it when you come visit the SoCal Gallery. It is 30 feet long. It is yeah, no it's... joke, 30 feet long. And the only way to get it into the gallery was to push it through the sea lion tunnel. 30 foot <laughs> tank thing. with two pallet jacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, it was um... crazy. One powder jack was motorized and one wasn't, but that didn't really help. <laughs> um, it, it was the manpower. And not only moving it to where it goes, of course it's not sitting on the floor. Mm -hmm. That would be too easy. No, it has to we have up. to, yeah, we had to get it at least three feet up yeah. mm -hmm. and onto a concrete yeah. platform. Um, but it all happened. Um, give or take, cutting out some of the wall for the protein skimmer. <laughs> 
but <laughs> but um, you made it happen. But that's what we have to do because yeah. putting the wall back is easy. Yeah. Because the wall is drywall and, yeah. and steel studs. So we can cut that out. We can put that back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you will never know we we cut it in the first yeah, place. Yeah, I've been in there since and I didn't notice that that wall was replaced. <laughs> and the way the tanks are built, them, um, those what the proteins come, they mm-hmm. have to be on the outsides. Because I was asking, well, why are they not behind it? And I was told they can't be. Mm-hmm. And so I said, okay. Cause I'll make it work. I, yeah. yeah, I don't do that part, mm-hmm. so I'll, I'll accept that part. Yeah. And so, um, but we got it up there. That's and awesome. um, I know we're talking about it like it's just was fun and games, but when you see it, please think about it. Please. Yeah, <laughs> this, how much do you think the tank weighed? A lot. <laughs> yeah, and just imagine like what was it like seven or ten of us just physically pushing mm-hmm. it with our body weight. The sea lions through. watching you in the tunnel. Yeah, and <laughs> oh, it was a show. Like yeah. the sea lions were very entertained by it. People think that they come here to see the sea lions, mm-hmm. but really the sea lions go to the tunnel to watch people. Yeah, mm-hmm. Chase and especially. Yeah. It's like what you guys doing down there? Hey, let's play. But I think um, something like that. Like people don't think about that. Mm. They don't think about how this. I don't know how many pounds, but very, very heavy tank got in place because, you know, they just show up and they see, and that's kind of what we want. You know, we don't Mm -hmm. necessarily want people thinking about, like, how did that tank get in here? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when you're building something, those are all things that have to be considered that I don't think most people think about. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool to think that, like, you and then Reed from Life Support, who we're going to talk to also, um, were working so hard behind the scenes to make this very seamless experience for our guests that no one's going to notice the work that you do, but in the best possible way. But like, that's the point of it almost. With all these cell phones, we didn't get no videos. I have a picture of the tank, though. So. Well, I'm talking about I of the whole people, move. I heard some people got some content. Okay, so okay. Maybe I think soon. I have a video of the two forklifts moving the tank at the same time. That was fun, too. Which was the coolest thing to do. Oh, it also it. happened at, like, 7 p.m., yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, was, <laughs> yeah. Me and Chris driving it on the forklift. That yes. Was, that was pretty fun. Yeah. So this long tank had two forklifts, one on each side of it, because you obviously can't tilt it up one way or another, and one forklift can't handle it because it's 30 feet long. Mm-hmm. And so for me, who has no engineering brain whatsoever, I was like, how are we going to move this thing from where it was delivered in our service yard to the gallery? Outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And <laughs> it was so cool to see, like, two forklifts, one on either end, and then someone on a walkie being like, up a little, no, pull back, pull back, and then f- having the forklifts move at the exact same speed to move this tank like a good way yeah it was so cool and i was like i don't know how you yeah, guys then did we had to change from the driver to the puller like, like yeah i was in front and chris was the, the power so i was in neutral yeah but neutral that wasn't working out so yeah. i told chris i gotta be the power in yeah the front, and you just and you gotta be in neutral mm-hmm. um and that's just to get it in front of these doors yeah and mm-hmm. then we just mm-hmm. shove it in yeah and then we <laughs> push it in mm-hmm. i think the ooh and the ahs from the people were something that I liked when we was going through Shark Lagoon. Yeah. yeah. Because if we wasn't close, and they were like, oh, mommy, <laughs> look, that's big. That that's just magnificent. remember this one kid. He said, mm-hmm. that's big. <laughs> it <laughs> is like, surprisingly yeah. big. I'm really excited for our guests to be able to come see it. And like, while you're in it, I'm sure it's difficult. You know, like, while you're trying to move it, it's like, all right, we got to do this. And then afterwards, like, that's going to be here for a very long yeah. time. And that story is going to mean so much to so many people because people are going to come and enjoy that exhibit. Yeah. And that's pretty much every single exhibit you see at the aquarium. There's a story behind it yes. like that. How it yes. got in the how wall it happened. in the first place. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What walls we had to remove yeah. to make it happen. Make it get <laughs> and in how you don't even notice that that work <clears throat> happened because that's the point. It's mm-hmm. like you are just enjoying the ocean mm-hmm. and you wouldn't be able to have that sort of seamless experience without Mike's participation in it. So... Another great one was the yellowtail tank. Oh, oh in and, Pacific um, Vision PV? Oh, yeah. I'm trying to tell you. I'm not even going to get into it, but... <laughs> it was rah. a day. Hey, was a that day. was the day because we, we had to lift it. Yeah. Under, On the second story. Yeah. Under the well. Wow. And you see how big it is. Yeah. And then over and over the lip, mm-hmm. but not hit the well hanging from the That's ceiling. That's so scary. Mm-hmm. Like, that, that was, that was a good one. Mm-hmm. That, was, that was a good one. I think I would be very satisfied to see the conclusion of that, but I would be so stressed watching. Like, I was stressed <laughs> out watching the 30-foot tank get, like, forklifted because I was like, yeah. it was, you know, it's heavier on one side because of all the acrylic the and acrylic all that stuff. Side, oh, my goodness. But mm-hmm. as soon as it's done, you're like, wow, we did it. Like, yeah. that was really cool. Mm-hmm. What are you the most excited about for the SoCal Gallery and all of the things that you've been working on? What have you seen that you're like, that's going to be cool when it's open? I think this this gallery is gonna bring a lot of energy. Like when when you walk in, 
it's going to have your eyes going to the right, going to the left, mm. going up. Wait a minute, a projector up, mm -hmm. looking at the ground. Like, it's going to be so much going on. I think that it's going to be something for everyone when they get in that gallery. Um, the tank we were just talking about, it's, it's so long and it can show so much mm -hmm. um, ocean life going on just in one tank. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see that that one finish just because the sheer length of it, yeah. it just looks- It's gonna be beautiful. Man, what else? Um, I mean, when you get to the tunnel, you know, the sea lions is the start of the show, <laughs> but I think the way it was before, I'm not saying it was bad, but you come from, a, from being well lit at Blue Cavern, mm -hmm. and it's like you enter a cave. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was dark in there. It dark. And it's like a cave. Mm -hmm. And then when you're coming out of the cave, you're at the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And so now when you're coming from Blue Cavern and when you come in, it's going to be like, oh, what's this? Mm -hmm. um, you have something educational, flash screen, um, giving out information. Mm -hmm. Then you had this projector. Then you had this tank. Then you had this other projector. Yeah. Then you have a tank mm -hmm. and a bigger tank. Then a bigger tank. Mm -hmm. Then another projector. And it's just it's so much going on around there. I think that's probably going to cool. be one of the best things. There's going to be a lot of uh, photo ops in there. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Madeline's excited. I'm She's so excited. like, we're going to get lots of We do have pictures. an Instagram, um, like, Instagrammable spots planned in there. <laughs> You've already guests. planned it. Mm -hmm. You're like, we know where the mm -hmm. best we spots are. We know where the, yeah. If you need any profile picture, come visit the aquarium. I think it's, I got some spots for you. <laughs> I think it's going to be cool because I, with the projection and everything, it almost looks like you are walking under the water surface. It's, and exactly. That's, that's when all that's kicked in. Immersive. That's going to be nice. Mm -hmm. I love that. I'm so excited because it is you know, a gallery that has been here for 25 years and has been relatively unremodeled, yeah. relatively untouched. I've seen it the same way since I was an intern in 2015. Since coming here as a kid, yeah, yeah exactly. Well, so. This is the second gallery I've been a part of rebuilding. Mm -hmm. The first one was our um, changing, um, animal changing yeah. gallery. Mm -hmm. well, that's now part of, part of PV. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, oh, I think I was here, uh, yeah, I was doing six day weeks. Um, I was helping the contractors from Germany um, with um, everything that's on the wall mm -hmm. when you go in the art gallery, mm -hmm. all the crystal hanging from the ceiling, none of that would have been up. Like they had the crystal, but they didn't have to get it up and stay the up. The foundation <laughs> of the stuff to hold uh -huh. it in place. And those are delicate, so um, you don't want them falling, let alone yeah. you know the idea that they're like, we have this. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> and like, we How do we make Mike. it stay? How yeah. do we make it stay? And, that's that's cool. and so that was just fun because we. I mean, you look in and then. Okay, if I get this and lay this out on the floor, and if you see it happening, you wouldn't know what what's going on. Yeah, but I kind of do, and you're like, "Why is that laying on the ground?" <laughs> yeah. I said, "Well, I got lasers, and I'm mapping out the ceiling and matching this with that, and then somehow I got to get this in the ceiling." Yeah, and then once that's in the ceiling, now we have the structure to hang all the yeah. crystals from, and then that white clay sculpture on the wall that mm -hmm. we have a projector projecting on, I had to put. All of that on the wall. Yeah. They just came with the, the stuff. <laughs> They're like, here's the sculpture. Good and luck. And I was like, <laughs> okay, this is heavy. Yeah. <laughs> this is nice and heavy. Uh, but they had the brackets, but it was like, we need some help making sure when we put it in the wall, it don't fall out of the wall. Yeah. Um, and pull the wall with it. <laughs> and so I spent a lot of time over there with that one. But that was fun. I think demo was funner. Yeah, I mean, Mike let me go in with a hey. sledgehammer and break she, down one of the walls in the SoCal gallery. I was having a bad day, and I was like, Mike, can I please put a hammer something? through a wall? And it was when we were doing the demo for it. To be clear, it was not while the SoCal gallery was open, yeah, but, but that, it was part of breaking that down. That kind of went well because four more people came over. Oh, we all needed it that and day. Just, it just, was a day. Yeah, yes. it was a section of the wall. Now, we were going to cut it the, cut it out big-wise mm -hmm. and just pull the whole big piece out. But they, they, you know, a little extra energy. Yeah. So it's like here, you can hit that. It's enrichment for us. Oh and they all left all smiling. Yeah. Like, everybody left smiling. It's, it's the like... equivalent of you meeting Parker is me breaking down. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Okay. I needed okay. this. <laughs> I needed this today. And it's just, it's so fun and it's so satisfying. Is there an area of the aquarium that you would love to, like, just dive into and just fully remodel or fully do something different with? Do you have, like, a, a vision, a Mike Davis vision or a gallery or an mm. exhibit? You know what I wish we could bring back when we had the little crocodiles? They were so cute. They were really, um, really cute. Those dudes, and I never got to interact with them, but they were cool. And yeah. they were, everybody had their color, like that was purple, that was yellow, mm -hmm. that was blue. Think... If we can bring them back. <laughs> Mike's like, I'm going to build an entire new alligator exhibit. <laughs> I got ideas, but I would have to sit down because right now it's like a lot of unfocused ideas. Mm -hmm. And then, but I would, oh, 
bring back the milkweed plants so we can get the monarch butterflies yeah, also. Yeah, I think that's in um, process. Yeah, we're doing it. There's yeah. a butterfly there's, garden there's out a, back. There was a couple of cocoons out there recently, too. Oh, so, so mm-hmm. they're coming. So, yeah, okay. things are happening. <laughs> Mike said we need these butterflies mm-hmm. back. Hey, <laughs> um, to everyone listening, I knew nothing about milkweed and monarchs and all this, this great stuff, but being at the aquarium... I've learned a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. The different types of milkweed and mm-hmm. how one butterfly likes this one and one likes mm-hmm. that one. And it's like it's just the coolest plant to have if you want a natural like a natural beauty thing to just just happen all by itself. Mm-hmm. Something that you don't have to go monitor or maintain yeah. besides water the plant. Mm-hmm. Um you can do it in your backyard. Yeah. yeah. Just mm-hmm. grow a bunch of milkweeds and then the the right time of the year, you yeah. come out, you got monarchs flying mm-hmm. everywhere. And they're endangered too, right? So mm-hmm. we're doing everything we can to help them out. Mm-hmm. We have a green roof, which I think is something that we are working to continually improve. But the green roof has some milkweed growing on it too. Mm-hmm. And oh. so um, okay. hopefully the butterflies can hang out up there. Mm-hmm. And then we have a butterfly garden behind the aviary, I believe. And it's not where public can really access just because mm-hmm. we want to make sure that make those that butterflies and their chrysalises yeah. are all mm-hmm. protected. But that's something that um, my boss, Rob, and a bunch of our animal care specialists have been working to maintain, mm-hmm. which has been fun to see. So I love that we do stuff like this. You know, we're an aquarium. It's People think it's been fun to see. Oh, man. No, it's fun that as an aquarium, you know, we we are doing things like that, things that we wouldn't necessarily think of. Like, yeah, we do have a native garden um, in our front plaza and then also by the watershed where we have a little butterfly garden. The native garden is that where we got all our hummingbirds living in? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's, pretty that's, cool. that's pretty dope. You 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 come into work and you get to the the staff door and you got a couple of yeah. hummingbirds just to chilling. Yeah, they looking at you like, yeah, I saw you yesterday. <laughs> he's cool. He's he cool. ain't worried You're about late. you at all. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. He's like, you like you supposed to be here five minutes yeah. ago. <laughs> No, it is it is a really magical place to work because not only do we have the animals inside, we are so um, thoughtful about the animals yeah. outside of the aquarium and, and who comes to visit us. And it's it's really special to walk up to work and be like, oh, that's the hummingbird that said hi mm-hmm. to me yesterday. There he is perched. And, oh, there's the butterflies that are hanging out around here. I just remember there's this, like, little juvenile squirrel that's mm-hmm. been Hey, in I was going to talk about yard. him, too. I was going to talk about him, too. <laughs> and we all know we're, like, the same squirrel. He's in the service yard recently. Because, like, he pops up, like, he's, like, literally telling you stuff. Like, yeah. is you finished? Can I go now? <laughs> And he's like running through the yard and like he is not scared of people. And so you if you're not looking, you could accidentally like I don't know that he would get to the point, but he'll be like right underfoot and like running in between. You know, like, dude, what's yeah. going on? But and getting to where he's going. He's happy. He's happy that. here. That's amazing. <laughs> happy cool. squirrel. Well, we have some questions from social media for you. Um, we wanted to know what are the best parts of your job and maybe some of the most frustrating parts. The best parts of my job is being able to create. Mm-hmm. Um, constantly being able to create. That's a big thing with me. Um, I was big on like artist type stuff when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. Did drafting because I got to see, got to draw out how structures were. Um, gravitated to tools um, since the age of eight. And so I've always been trying to build things. Mm-hmm. And so um, I still buy Legos to this day and I won't tell you my age, but I'm <laughs> up there. So that's like one of the best things. And I, and frustrating um i don't really let my work frustrate me i try not to move too fast and i don't move slow and i move methodically well it kind of seems like if there is a frustrating aspect of your job you fix it yeah so it's no longer frustrating and in process probably alleviate the frustration for a lot of people where it is to be something that frustrating somebody else Mm. and then now i take it upon myself to let me end that frustration Mm. because it's not mine but yeah. It's, it's it's in my realm of, okay. of fixing. Um, maybe we touched on this already. What are your hours like? Are you always on call? Um, well, um, after my latest promotion, mm-hmm. now now I'm a at home call me guy. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, very cool. Because of our uh, chiller plant um, that maintains the temp for the whole building, all the tanks, all the airs, everything. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's like graveyard shift, and we don't have too many people here, maybe one or two people from life support, life support. It's not responsible for maintaining our chillers and the chiller mm-hmm. plant and the boiler plant. Um, but they have to have a little bit of awareness so when stuff mm-hmm. happens, you can be talked through it over the phone. Mm-hmm. And as far as the hours, um, I do, at this point, I do whatever hours necessary to get stuff done. Yeah. And so I could have literally a six-day, 58-hour week and then a 43-hour week. Mm-hmm. Um, people think I probably do more of the 58 hours. Like, you never... 
at home because I always see you here. <laughs> they come back. They go home and, and come back with friends when they're off. You're yeah. still here. You're still- <laughs> Yeah, no, we're so lucky to have someone like you that's so dedicated, people like you that care. Um, I think awesome. you maintain all of the, like, guest-facing things, but mm-hmm. also so much of the support structure for mm-hmm. the animals to survive. And that is so much work to do. And it's it's such – it's work that, like, when it's done well, you don't notice that it's being done. And I think that that that's is – That's what I try and do. Yeah. Um, I know that you've helped – builds the infrastructure for a lot of the projects that I personally get a chance to work on and a lot of the infrastructure that supports so many of our conservation efforts like the sea otter surrogacy pools and that area you built the entire floors and stairs and decking and all of that that allows us to walk around that was pretty cool when you were learning how to do stuff that you never did before like in your mind you understand all of it the whole process but you never did it and so I was just like well I understand all this I can cut all this material I can do all of this so just because I haven't done this before mm-hmm. doesn't mean I can't. And so I, just, I put all kind of brain cells, skin tissue. <laughs> um, but the same thing, like you said, about surrogacy. Yeah. Uh, then the platform floor you see in yeah. penguins. Yeah, that was um, really cool. With the door. Um, like I said, I like building. And this gives me, me and the facilities, this gives me opportunities just to build. I never know what I'm going to build next. Yeah. And that's that's a good thing. You may have answered this in all of those examples, but do you have a favorite project that you've worked on? Hmm. Favorite project. Hmm. <laughs> well, I would say the, the floor and penguins because yeah. I was just given a picture. <laughs> From Almost Brent. like, can you do this? <laughs> My boss gave you a picture that he drew, I'm sure, on a napkin and well, said, well, <laughs> no, well, to his credit, he was on a computer. The picture looked clean. Oh, it was a SketchUp. Um, oh. <laughs> but there was no measurements. Mm-hmm. There was no nothing. I, it's just I looked and I said, okay, what do I have to match what I'm looking at? Mm-hmm. And then I told him, okay, I could build it. He was like, you sure? And I was like, yeah. And I just went around the yard, called a few people. Start gathering all this material, start measuring stuff out. And then Brett came back and he said, I knew I should have asked you earlier. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I, I come, I give you an idea, and then you take everything in my idea, and then you just make it better by adding all this other mm-hmm. stuff. I could have ever imagined. Um, and to me, it just it just came out. It just came out dark. Yeah. It's one of the, the the way it's leveled and the way all the pieces can move so yeah. it doesn't get under. as cloggy and dirty with mm-hmm. the feathers from the penguins. Um, the drain line is now the uh, three layers of PVC that's removable instead of rusty I mean, metal that can rust mm-hmm. up on you. Yeah. So I was thinking of all this stuff to make this better, this better, that better, yeah. that, that better, and I haven't been back there since. It, yeah, you haven't to needed do. to because you haven't. Yeah, you have <laughs> You did it perfect. That's, that's awesome. pretty cool. That's I mean, so cool. for anyone who is, this is the penguins behind the scenes area, and this is not the front facing area. So this is where we would sometimes do encounters and where we would take penguins back if we had them, you know, separated for health reasons or breeding season. And the area was fine, but it had not been reimagined or redesigned since our penguin habitat was built. And when you have animals in a space, you very quickly learn what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And it's not always easy to totally redo a space. And so there was a deck area that was just, it would just get dirty really quickly because penguins poop a lot when you're holding them back there and And it turns out there wasn't really a great way to rinse that down without having to rip everything up and it was just a lot of work to keep that area the way that we needed it to and so when Mike redid it it, everything is just like easily removable pieces and it is almost like Lego you can put it back together very readily you can clean under it you can rinse all of those it just looks clean all the time now (laughs) it doesn't feel like it's dirty you know like and weirdly the best part doesn't smell like penguin which I love penguins (laughs) I don't love the smell of penguins we just recorded with Rachel about our diving episode (laughs) her her her, um least favorite exhibit to dive in is penguins because of the the there's a a penguin scent yeah for sure Mm -hmm. yeah but I was in there for a few weeks. <laughs> Mike's like, I'm familiar. I know. Tell Rachel they're I know really about that cute. life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're really, 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 really cute. cute. But, they but do I like those a... birds because they're cool. Yeah, they're, they are they're, cool. They're curious and they, mm-hmm. they're they nice for the most part. For the most part. For the most part. They can be finicky sometimes, mm-hmm. but Just for the most part. Just have things nice. to keep their attention, mm-hmm. like keychains. Mm-hmm. Anything shiny. Nature. They're like a little kid. They're like, wow. Mm-hmm. Me too. Yeah. Wow. Just dangle something <laughs> yeah. sparkly in front of me. If I'm ever one. being rude to you, just dangle <laughs> just something. Just dangle something. <laughs> but 
That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mike, for joining us today on Aquarium of the Pacific. This has been so the insightful. Pod-cific. The Pacific. The yes. And thanks for fixing everything that I'm I break. Sorry. You know, it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's I didn't okay. build the first iteration of it, and that's yeah. why you couldn't lean on it. And that's why <laughs> I fell <laughs> through that. Well, thank you, Mike. I really thank appreciate you, Mike. your time. This is awesome. Appreciate you guys having me on the podcast. Um, yeah. Come to the aquarium and come check us out. Um, you might be lucky. You might be one of the lucky people to see me. That's true. <laughs> and I can give you a partial tour while I'm in the middle of doing a build. Yeah. <laughs> come look at this project. If you have I'm a problem at home where you need a blueprint, yeah. just come find Mike. I'm not above hey, that. I've, <laughs> I've, it, it already gets there. Yeah. <laughs> I have definitely already asked. I think I broke my washing machine at one point and I fixed oh. it myself. And then the next day I told Mike, I was like, I fixed my washing machine myself. Just so proud because I was like, you fix things. Yeah. I can fix things. <laughs> you'll, <laughs> you'll understand how hard that yeah. was. Yeah. Cool. So you guys Boom. have a good one, and thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. All right. Boom. We are getting out of here. Do you have time to record intros? Or do oh, sure. Go? Okay. I have till four. So yeah, I've got I would 15 like to... whole minutes. Even if we can just you reset want, the deal. You want to beatbox on your intro? Yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> can you? <laughs> We're putting it in, Mike. <laughs> that's going to be for that's sure. going to be in it for that's sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Thank you, Mike. Thank that you, Mike. Was amazing. Right. All right, welcome back to the Pacific. Today we have on Reed Edwards. Reed, what is your job title here at the aquarium? I'm a life support technician, uh, tech technician three. Mm, technician three. Yeah. Three level three. So that's three. the highest level of life support technician. Right. Yeah, we start at one. Okay. So or a senior. Oh, some people senior call us. life support technician. So what is a life support technician? What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> everything. That's a, yeah, everything is the <laughs> short answer. Um, I like to compare us to the mechanical side of husbandry. Mm. So we focus on everything mechanical that helps keep the animals alive and thriving. Um, So the heat, um, heating, cooling for the tanks, the filtration, ozone, um, pH levels we we contribute. Um, Those are kind of our main focuses. Mm -hmm. Then builds, install, repair, whatever needs to be done. Yeah, you're basically keeping the environment for the animals comfortable and within, like, what they can live in. And that can include, like, chilling water or heating things up. And um, the ozone always freaks me out a little bit because I don't fully understand how it works to do what it does. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So what does ozone do? Okay. So, yeah, I mean, to begin with, ozone freaks me out a little bit. We're very (laughs) careful with ozone. Ozone is um, an O3 molecule. Mm -hmm. Okay. So oxygen's O2. Um, We run... Um, air through machines that actually um, break up the oxygen molecules and recombine them. There's some chemistry or physics or whatever that I don't know, but make them an O3. So it's a super unstable stable molecule. We push that through a reaction chamber um, away from our animals. And <laughs> That's important. <laughs> yeah, it is important because what ozone actually does is it attaches to the cells of the stuff that we don't want in the water and destroys the cells. Mm. Okay, because it's unstable. And then we so we go through a process um, where we have a huge tower for our big systems. We inject the ozone. Mm-hmm. We run it at a, a higher level that would be safe for the animals in the water. And then it goes through another tower where we call degas. The good thing about ozone, it's super unstable. It does not want to be O3. It wants to be O2. Mm-hmm. So it's really easy to bring it back. So we run it through one tower and we run it through another tower. And then we put it into the um, system. So we're cleaning. The bulk of our cleaning is in the first tower mm. where we're injecting it. And then we have a um, therapeutic level, I guess, of cleaning in the tank. In ozone, we measure it through ORP, um, oxygen reduction potential. Mm-hmm. So like the seawater has a natural oxygen reduction ORP of 350 okay. millivolts. So um, we'll target the tanks kind of there, depending on the animal sensitivity. So like our mammals, we could run higher than like our sharks. That's fair. The mammals are pretty hardy. Yeah, (laughs) well, they're not as sensitive. (laughs) I feel like my eyes are just like, whoa. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. and they're not as sensitive. Yeah. So and then we monitor that all the time. We monitor the water in the system and we monitor it's in in the um, towers and we have thresholds. And if it goes out of range, it automatically turns off. It also alerts us um, if there's a problem so we could respond. It's pretty cool that everything can be so automated and like, hey, within these parameters, okay, but outside of that, turn off or notify someone to pay attention to something. Yeah, I mean, everything that is important to the animals is automated. Yeah. 
And for that reason, you guys have pretty long hours, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're here 24-7, um, 365. Yep. Yeah. I think that's something people don't always realize is that the system's maintenance takes even more time and commitment than the animal husbandry maintenance mm-hmm. can because like I'm here usually eight hours a day sometimes I have longer shifts if there's mm-hmm. needs for animals to you know I'm acclimating a tadpole something like right. that mm-hmm. but someone needs to be here in case something goes wrong 24 hours a day mm-hmm. and so you guys have graveyard <laughs> shifts I've come in at three in the morning and there's life support people here yeah. still working mm-hmm. and it's cool to see but also those must be some pretty long hours do you typically get anything going wrong in the middle of the night I used to say it comes in clusters mm. for me I when I was on graveyards it was like it would be quiet for a long time so then you take this role we have mate ongoing maintenance we yeah. flush out tanks clean whatever it mm-hmm. is um, and then part of your shift is just being there in case something goes yeah. wrong. A pump decides it doesn't want to work anymore or whatever it is. Um, and it was like a cluster. You'd go months and it was quiet. Mm-hmm. You kind of have it easy, get your stuff done. And then all of a sudden everything would fall apart. <laughs> so, and we do layers. So we have one to two people on for graveyard shift mm-hmm. from 8.30 p.m. till 5.30 a.m. Okay. There's at least one person all the time, no matter what. And quite often now we have two people with them. But the supervisor and the manager are also on call. Mm-hmm. So... Um, if they get into a situation they can't diagnose or fix, then they call the bosses. And sometimes it's just over the phone. Hey, do this, do yeah. that. You know, typically our graveyard are our newer people. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it's just a matter they've never seen it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. they don't understand so how. That you have to be here a long time. Too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, just do this, wiggle this, it'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, there's been plenty of times I, I when I was on grave, I'd call, you know, the supervisor and be like, oh, it's all falling apart. <laughs> and then they're like, well, do that. Or I'd even, there's times as I got more experience, it'd be like, oh, I'm sorry I called you. I just realized <laughs> I actually know. But it's scary in the moment. Yeah, you know? of course. And, and there's so much writing on it too. Yeah. And I'm sure right. I'm sure like all of our all of the leadership there is on the same page, you know, like much rather would receive a call in the middle of the night oh, yeah. than something catastrophic happens. Yeah, I've never to their credit, you know, um, at two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, whatever it is, um, I've never had them say, Why did you call me for that? That's yeah. sweet. It's like you I know, love that. okay, you know, we worked it out, yeah. you know, the, back to bed. the animals. <laughs> sleep, yeah, yeah but back to sleep or not sometimes. Yeah. But, <laughs> or I'll come in. Yeah, yeah. yeah the okay. animal's health and safety is, is what we do. So yeah. if it means someone gets a little less sleep, then that's what it means. Yeah, it's worth it. I like yeah. the description of it being sort of the mechanical side of husbandry because it really yeah. is. Like it's maintaining everything that allows us to have animals that are healthy and happy mm-hmm. and function the way that they're supposed to and have an environment that is kind of matching what they're supposed to. Yeah. yeah. What made you want to work in life support <laughs> at the aquarium or at an aquarium? Yeah. So that's kind of interesting. I worked in the hobby for a very long time. Okay. Um, mostly part-time and I'm actually, um, half a semester away from a teaching credential. Ooh, I, I didn't know my, that. Yeah, I thought that was my path. And I was working at the time part time and finishing up school. Yeah. And my oldest child um, was in kindergarten. Yeah. And he had a little girlfriend. And <laughs> Cute. <laughs> we got to know the mom, mm-hmm. and the dad wasn't there. Uh, he had been gone for a long time, and he came home one day and she ran up. And I heard he was a sailor, but he had a huge beard. And it's like, I said, it's kind of a smart comment about I didn't know they let you wear beards like that in the Navy (laughs) fortunately he was a smart aleck like me and he made something back and it turns out he had just finished a tour doing um, running underwater robotics exploring like ecosystems whatever and he had started working here in life support and graveyard but he ended up getting a job in Monterey Mm -hmm. okay and he came so he got the job in Monterey and he came up to me one day and said hey I'm leaving you love the stuff go apply so I applied and I didn't get the job. <laughs> Josh, my supervisor, actually got the job. And oh. then I got a call eight months later and said, hey, we have an opening. And got it. then nice. I started well, not sleeping for five years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've worked here for seven, as I understand yeah. it. So the last two years, you've been getting some sleep. Yeah. <laughs> What's <Finally>. changed? <laughs> More, well, so in life support, because, you know, graveyard's not a whole lot of fun. You start on graves mm-hmm. and you kind of bide your time. Um and then as openings come, you take them. 
with my family schedule with kids mm-hmm. and stuff, I kind of stayed a little longer than most people do. Yeah. Um, but then I was able to go to days. So now I'm on, <clears throat> excuse me, what we call X shift. I'm on our coverage shift. Mm. So I get some flexibility um, with scheduling, but I also help cover when people are out. Yeah. So. I feel like you're here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> with the gallery, I was Probably, here a yeah, lot. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what did you like about Graveyard Shift? Having kind of the place to yourself? Yeah. Nice? You know, it's, it's, it, it is kind of nice once you get used to it. Honestly, they, uh, my team had a bet that I was going to quit in the first three months. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Sure I was showed them. stressed out. <laughs> Seven years yeah. later. I had kids to feed. So yeah. Yeah. I mm-hmm. think that was the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's stressful because you get your training and, and, at some point you have to be by yourself yeah they just leave you alone right Mm -hmm. and so now you have this building with all the animals and it's you and a couple security guards Mm yeah and so it was it was really stressful for quite a while and then i got used to it and it is nice in a lot of ways to have the building to yourself yeah you know Mm -hmm. it is really kind of cool to go and look at the exhibits on your downtime Mm-hmm. When the animals are, you know, in a state you don't normally see yeah. them. Do you see them? Have you ever seen them doing something that, like, we don't typically observe during the day? Like nocturnal animals or, what? Are, like, what are our otters doing at night? Just hitting They're stuff on just, the wall? Yeah, <laughs> some are sleeping. I mean, for the most part, they would just kind of be hanging out on the mm-hmm. beach. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we started getting the younger ones for a while, mm-hmm. we uh, for a while there, we were feeding them with the, those mm-hmm. tubes passing mm-hmm. them through. So that was really cool. Yeah, it was nice to have yeah. someone who was you know had some training in what yeah. that we were doing and helping to offer the really young otters food at like two in the morning yeah so we were doing um on graveyards you you do two sets of rounds mm-hmm. so right roughly right when you start mm-hmm. usually about nine o'clock you started and you walk the whole building checking every system every major system make mm-hmm. sure everything's good and then at two o'clock you do the rounds on the we call them focus rounds it's the smaller systems mm-hmm. um you know there's not a necessarily a gallon size defining which yeah. ones are which but <laughs> you check those so that's when we'd feed the otters mm. and they'd hear that door open <laughs> Get and so they knew they'd be on the the acrylic <laughs> just banging on there you know like breakfast 2 a.m yeah breakfast. yeah, yeah like so snack. Let's go. <laughs> yeah it was pretty cool and i mean and i get to say i fed sea otters and yeah. nobody yeah. not many people have done that no so. really not very many at all and it was i it was super nice for us because at the time, we didn't have as established of a night shift mm-hmm. or practice for that. And so we had people who could be trained and were here. And I don't know, it was really, really nice to have sort of an interdepartmental, like, hey, we can rely on yeah. these people to do this thing if mm-hmm. they're already here doing that. Um, and as we learned in our otter episodes, otters be eaten. They, yeah, they, <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> so <laughs> much food. No matter what time of day you walked in there with something. So that was really helpful. That's awesome. Um and my next question is, what kinds of skills and expertise are required to work as a life support technician? Like, what did you come in with? You know, I, I've said before, like, you need to be able to hold a wrench and okay. be willing to learn. There's, it's, it's not, our skill set is very diverse. Mm. Um, it helps to have, like, an understanding of water chemistry and what's going on mm-hmm. biologically or chemically. Um, and, you know, it helps to have a basic understanding of how filtration works. But I've learned so much. Yeah. I mean, I used to install aquariums on the side mm. for people, and it was so different, you know. Um, so, and part of it is just, like, like the plumbing size. It used to be, like, 2-inch. Now we do 6-inch and, you know, 4-inch, yeah. whatever. And it's different working with that. But I, I think being willing to learn and having a little kind of just hands-on mechanical experience, okay. you know, not being afraid to use a wrench or a saw yeah. or whatever. So, I Yeah. It feels like a lot of on the job learning, really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like I see people who come in and they don't have a ton of experience, but then, you know, a couple months later, I see them doing these incredibly complex things that I can't mm-hmm. imagine myself doing. Although I can hold a wrench and I am willing yeah. to learn. And Reed has taught me how to do a lot of stuff <laughs> at the frog areas. <laughs> so I can stop calling him all the time when yeah. I have frog problems. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. Well, Here's something that I keep hearing people describe, like, the aquarium, is we call it a closed system. What is a closed, like, what does that mean for us? Well, we do, um, so they have some aquariums, and I'm not really familiar with it, where they kind of do a flow through. So Mm. they're kind of doing a constant, they're constantly bringing in, like, new seawater. Okay. And and I think that's the primary thing they're talking about. Um, And uh, 
they're constantly kind of bringing new seawater. So they're constantly doing like a water change on their systems okay. mm-hmm. at varying rates. Uh, I so know, they're like just part of the ocean, essentially. Oh, so. yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And there's there's some filtration going out that they okay. have to do. And there's some things. Um, I, I've talked to some colleagues that work on those trying to understand it better. Yeah. I don't fully know. But with us as a closed system, every one of our systems is isolated from the other system. Okay. They are not connected in any shape. We might have a drain line that they go to that yeah. is connected, but we make sure that there's no way, even on that drain line, that water can't get back in. So everyone operates by itself. You know, you might have a few like um, the Jules tank in SoCal has, the new gallery has um, four or five tanks off of one kind of common sump. Okay. So you might see that, but that's still, we consider that one system. Yeah. I think they would too on, on the husbander side. Hmm. So That's interesting. So all the water chemistry for those tanks is the same because it's the same water, but at the aquarium, everything is sort of operated as individual little systems, which yeah. I'm sure means a lot more checking up on things and maintenance in general of like needing to know which system needs what and everything is a little bit different. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. Is there, and I have a feeling I know the answer to this, we are located on the water if you guys have Mm -hmm. ever been to the aquarium of the pacific um why don't we use our ocean water just from the ocean right offshore here in long beach here in long beach (laughs) yeah so we do actually uh, in in two ways uh we buy water okay um how do you buy water who buys it (laughs) how do we buy the aquarium buys there's a company um and they pump water in and they filter the water and then they bring it over on a truck. You see the truck on the side mm-hmm, of the road multiple mm-hmm. times a day, and they pump water into our reservoirs. It's pretty cool. So mm-hmm. for the building has two reservoirs built in. At capacity, I think we could hold 240,000 gallons. Do you know offhand how many gallons total all of the systems together can hold at the aquarium? It's changed. We're... I think we're a million one or a million two. Okay. So we could fill a quarter of the exhibits with a full reservoir, essentially. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. What's the biggest system here at the aquarium? It's Trop trop Reef. Yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah. (laughs) Why did I even ask? It's a huge Yeah, Trop Reef is 335, 350, somewhere in there. Wow. Yeah, I think we say 350. Yeah, 350. And then um, Predators is the next. It's 180, I believe. Oh, I didn't know that. Off the top of my head. What, um, Predators and seals are pretty close. Seals and sea lions is a big exhibit, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What type of filtration do you do for a 350-gallon trop exhibit? So it's not too different than anything. It's the same as most everyone. It's just massive sand filters. Mm-hmm. So um, we are... Hmm. So basically all the systems we run, uh, we're, pump, we're pulling water out of the tank. Mm-hmm. And pushing it through our fil- or our pumps and into the filters, mm-hmm. into the sand filters. Uh, the water comes in the top of the sand filter on a spray bar. Mm-hmm. It goes through the sand and then out. There's another essentially spray bar. They're called laterals, but on the bottom. And then that goes back. It's all pressurized and it goes back through into the system. Very cool. So that's the main. Uh, the ozone's mm-hmm. actually considered filtration. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, Every major exhibit has a protein skimmer on it as well. And the stuff from a protein skimmer we talked about before is called skimmate. Skimmate. Look at us skimmate. knowing things about the protein. Stuff. The, stu- the, the stuff. The foamy brown stuff that comes yeah. out. So what is, when you have a protein skimmer and you have a skimmate, what's that comprised of? Okay, so a protein skimmer technically is a fro- foam fractionator. Oh, wow. Ooh, yeah, fancy <laughs> words. Sounds like uh, something for coffee, but yeah. it's definitely Yeah, no, you don't want to put that in your coffee. <laughs> uh, so what a protein skimmer does is you're injecting air. You're mixing air and water together to get okay. a micro bubble, a super fine bubble. And that bubble is picking up the proteins. Mm-hmm. It, it, it clings to the proteins. Like think about when you walk on the beach and you have that foam. Mm. It's the same thing. The crashing of the waves does the same thing. Oh. So we're replicating that in a controlled area so we could pull that protein out because when protein breaks down, it turns into ammonia and then nitrite, nitrate. Mm -hmm. None of that's super great for our tanks. Got it. Um, So we're trying to eliminate some of that before it breaks down. Mm -hmm. Cool. And so that's what skimmate is, is protein and salt water and bubbles. Hmm. Yeah, I don't want that in my coffee. (laughs) Yeah, you don't want that in your coffee. 
I just don't want the salt water. The protein <laughs> that, I could use. I don't think you want that protein. <laughs> Not, Not that, that protein. kind of protein. <laughs> That's fair. So with that, like, there are some really, really big exhibits. Are there some exhibits that maybe even aren't that big but are more difficult to maintain? And what might, what might make something harder or easier to maintain? I mean, from our perspective, it, I think it's probably the frequency of work. Otters okay. like to eat. Mm, and so you we're know what comes with that. <laughs> it's not even that. It's the it's the shells. It's the enrichment. Mm. Or, so that gets caught. To protect our pumps, we have baskets on the front mm. that catch big debris so that we're not destroying multi-thousand dollar pumps every That's other helpful. day. Mm-hmm. And multi-thousand, even five-figure multi-thousand, yeah. um, depending on the system. So we catch those. And as those get included, uh, the water stops moving, yeah. which is not good for anybody. So then we have to go out and clean it out. They shed a lot because they yeah, have. They I don't shed. Think people so don't realize much. that they shed. It's I, I think that surprised me honestly when I first. So like on our big otters exhibit, the mm-hmm. main exhibit, mm-hmm. those get clean. Those baskets get cleaned twice a week. Oh wow! With the backwashes, and those are um, almost three feet long. And wow! Pr- what eight inches diameter? Yeah, they're, they're substantial. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what surprised me the most is how much they shed. Yeah, it's all hair in there. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's a lot. It, it's impressive. Our My shower drain would not be long. <laughs> yeah, it's already struggling. It's, we're, like, rinsing down the deck in there, and it will just – hair will come off the walls. You're like, you've never been this high up on the wall. How, <laughs> how did, did your hair, hair – maybe it's like a shower where they, like, pull it out and they stick they, it yeah, on the wall. <laughs> like one of those. Well, because how hairy are there? They're a million – a million um, hairs per, per square, square inch. inch. Yeah. I hear wow. the figure that people will say is like if you imagined a golden retriever, mm-hmm. which I always imagine because yeah. I have one, um, and then you it's shave that Atlas. gold. I yeah, Atlas. I specifically imagine my golden retriever, <laughs> and then you shave them and you condense all of the hair on that dog to one square inch. That's how dense sea otter fur is, mm-hmm. and it's so dense because their skin can't ever get wet or else they get really cold. But it also means that they are shedding so many hairs all the time. <laughs> all so, I think yeah. about my dog shedding, and then I'm like, imagine there all was just it. so many mm-hmm. of my dog in my house and how much hair that would be. So thankfully, a lot of it takes place in the water, thankfully for me, but yeah. not thankfully for Reed, yeah. who then has to go clean out his <laughs> hunks of hair. <laughs> yeah, not as much now that I'm not in graveyards. So. That's true. I think something that maybe gets overlooked is life support equipment is very, very expensive. Yeah, it can be. It's It's... Because we have, um, some of it's because we have parameters. Like our Mm -hmm. big pumps are cast fiberglass. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't, we have to be very careful with metals Mm because salt water is so corrosive. Mm. So, I mean, there, at some point we have to have metal, but then we try and protect it. And then Mm. we use very high grade um, stainless steel every time we can Mm -hmm. because it will break down slower. I think a lot of your job is like things actively working against you. (laughs) (laughs) When you put it that way. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, salt water is corrosive. It's going to break down everything we do at Mm -hmm. some point. Yeah. But, you know. That's really interesting. Well, I uh, also have heard that when we are getting our salt water, Sometimes the intake is from the river and mm-hmm. you have to clean out the screens to prevent, you know, there's screens to prevent all this weird stuff from getting into the salt water. What are some of the weirdest things you found cleaning those screens out there? <sighs> the screens themselves are usually just like muddy, gross, and okay. mm-hmm. we might have some crustacean or something on there that we try and return to their environment. <laughs> um, Go home. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it, it's sitting in, in the river, harbor, mm. water, and in that detritus mud for um so and the screens are um they're not like a window screen right they're what are they about six foot long four foot tall oh wow and they're all stainless steel Mm -hmm. and they're ribbed with um they're stainless steel and um it's like a pvc board starboard uh, to kind of give the structure but the screen itself kind of looks like the radiator in your car okay right so it's really small Mm -hmm. fine thing so and they're Oh, 150, 200 pounds. They're not, not, <laughs> they're easy, not to clean. easy, not mm-hmm. fun. Mm-hmm. But so we have to pull those out. So we find that it's mostly in the river. We find things like we had one time we were working down. It's under a, um, a pier mm-hmm. and we we're working there and there was like this abandoned doll. Oh, Ooh, it's so scary already. I don't like, like it. Yeah, just like <laughs> sitting there staring at us the whole time. Under like, the pier? It was kind of on the rock on the jetty work, but it was just kind of like floating there by. <laughs> Ooh, I don't like, like that. Yeah, it was not. It was kind of a little, you know, I mean, and you, yeah, kind of just, just sitting you. there with its eyes staring at you. Just like one eye closed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, made it entertaining. Hello, Reed. 
Hello. You know. Don't touch my screen, <laughs> yeah, read. Yeah, my screens. Well, that's so. horrifying. That was not the story I wanted so, to hear. And those screens get changed. So there's four screens. I mean, yep. to understand how much buildup it is, we have, I'm sorry, there's eight screens, mm -hmm. four sides on a box. Mm -hmm. And those, every six months we do screens, but we do one side at a time. So by the time we get to them, they've been in the water for over a year. Oh, wow. So they're... They're, they're yeah, yucky. They're funky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. And there's little dolls watching you. And there's dolls Sometimes watching there's a free us. Free doll while you're yeah. down there. Yeah, you know. Okay, my, I wanted to know, and it sounds like I already know, what is your favorite animal at the aquarium, and then what is your least favorite animal to take care of from a life support perspective? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess the because of the frequency of maintenance, the otters are the ones that are I'll say <laughs> most complained about. Mm, fair. Um, are are most complained about. Um. <laughs> I'm going to tell them. <laughs> yeah. Well, the otters? Yeah. Oh, they know. Thank We've complained God. openly like, to the fine. otters. No, As you're feeding of, them, please stop shoving things that, down that, the drain. That's one of the beauties of graveyard. You can complain out loud. It's and, true. You know. They don't mind. But, um, yeah. I mean, yeah, Aaron knows I have affinity for the frogs. Which frogs, Reed? Well, the mountain frogs. Yes, thank yeah. you. It, that's what I needed cool. to hear. That'll be our next episode. We'll hear all about the mountain, yeah. mountain yellow legged frogs. Yeah. Our um, mm -hmm. season finale is going to be a highlight on the conservation work that we do with mountain yellow legged frogs. But something that people might not know is that Reed actually, with some help, obviously, mm -hmm. built those systems from scratch all by himself. Oh, that was fun. Mm -hmm. Which was really cool to watch and sort of be a part of. And now every time I have questions, I'm like, Reed, what happened? What's going on? What does this valve do? And how can, like, I turned it slightly weirdly. And so it's really nice to have someone who has that much insight into what that system's supposed to look like mm -hmm. here on site. Because there'll be times where someone bumps something and the flow is just almost too low for the yeah, chiller to function. That, that was, that was last week. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then we fixed it because Reed thankfully knows exactly which valve got bumped and knows what everything's supposed to look like. So... Um, yeah, you built an entire room for endangered frogs. Yeah, I, that's the cool part of the job. Yeah, right. I mean, I mean, there's there's the bragging part, like I did that. <laughs> but it's cool that I'm actually returning, helping, mm -hmm. like helping a bigger thing, right? Yep. I mean, and it, it's me, but it's my team. Yeah, I work with amazing people. I'm, I'm really honored to do that. It's true. It so. was always fun when the project was like sort of being built and the room was being built that I would come in sometimes and then you guys would just be like, you know, working together and like having a good time in there. Yeah. And I was like, can I come in? I can't help at all, but can I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we had our third system come up and running. And mm -hmm. so you it guys were working great. in there. It's mm -hmm. really nice in there. It is probably some of the clean, like I could never plumb anything that cleanly, but you can tell that like from its inception, just so well planned. And I attribute a lot of the success of that project to all of the work that Life Support did to make mm -hmm. that room so successful and the maintenance never ends a little less yeah. than the otters but um we have like our ro system and our di systems that those membranes need to get replaced uh, all the time yeah <laughs> today, <laughs> later today when they come in and yeah i mean we have yeah. really clean water in there they have uv sterilizers on them they have chillers that are up in the attic and it draws a lot of power electricity just <laughs> keep everything cold it's like 90 degrees outside today and the frogs are chilling in there at 60 degrees with water that's 50. And I'm like, must be nice. <laughs> what a life. I think it's great. You know, that's so much care and thought put into something that our public will never see. They'll never be able to go into that room. <laughs> they can go in there. <laughs> I'll make sure that someone sees <laughs> we'll it. We'll do a virtual tour. There we go. That's day. fine. We'll do that. Um, Welcome but... to my crib. Mountain frog crib. <laughs> Aw, can we do that? We'll have to we'll do, have do that. To do it. <laughs> can we do a TikTok near you? Well... I wanted to touch a little bit on the Southern California Gallery, and essentially, the aquarium turned 25 this year, and does that mean that some of our infrastructure and our plumbing is also 25 years old, and what does that mean older for you? Even. Older, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I I guess, depending on, because they started building before 25, yeah. right, and, and had water in. I wasn't around, so I don't know how they brought <laughs> like, things I didn't along. work here 26 years ago. I, I was, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it is older. It's... So, yeah, with age, like an old car, everything, mm -hmm. things need repair and update and, and stuff. But then we have a lot of stuff. Like the aquarium, one of the things we do, um, we invest in quality mm. um, plumbing and pumps and, and our valves. But if you go on TROP, we were talking about the Tropical Exhibit, Big mm -hmm. TROP. I don't, we have 30 names for it because it's been around forever. TROP Reef, I think. TROP, trop Reef, thank reef, you. Big yeah, trop. I can't. <laughs> All we, the TROPs. And, yeah. and from the life support perspective, every system has a number. Okay. And so. Do you to, know them by 
Like I know all the major systems, yeah. What's otters? Otters, three, four, one. <gasps> What's trop? Trop is four, four, three. What's penguins? Penguins is two, six, one. This is my favorite game to play <laughs> with everyone. Yeah. I did this with Josh Wagner on the scientific names of all the jellies, but yeah. it's so funny to me when people have this like incredibly niche knowledge that no one else <laughs> has, and then they just know it's it exciting. like right there. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what those numbers mean. No, yeah. you know them. I, but it's, you it, said them so quickly. You could also be lying, and I would have no it's, idea. You, well, you could you could fact check me, but yeah, I can be lying. So <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I was. And I was. <laughs> yeah. No, the, all the tropical galleries are 400s. Okay. All the northern okay. galleries are 300s. Oh. All the SoCal galleries are 200s. Does mountain frogs have a number? Um, no. <gasps> we just there got mountain frogs. Mountain number one. MYLF1, MYLF2. So because those correspond to points on our um, Siemens server, mm. on our computer, mm-hmm. how and our monitoring system. So we can't, I mean, well, I guess we can, but none of us want to type out tropical yeah. reef. Yeah, yeah. Flow filter flow, yeah. which is one of the things we monitor all the time. So, um, it, so we mo- it's four four three, you know. So we get we monitor by or get a notification if there's an mm. issue. Four four three, it will say like FF four four three zero. In mm-hmm. which case, it means there's no flow going through tropical reef. Mm-hmm. It means there's something wrong, and we need to go figure yeah. out why. You know how, like, in movies and TV shows, when you see someone in, like, a security office, and mm-hmm. it's, like, all the screens up? Mm-hmm. That's what I imagine you guys doing with all of the different, like, data points for, like, flow, temperature, all those things. It, it is. So, um, I mean, so the the technician on duty, um, depending on the shift, right, um, carries a phone, has a phone that's attached to our Siemens server Mm -hmm. our siemens computer and then throughout the day they get notifications for multiple you know uh, temperatures if a temperatures um most of our temperatures are set up so anything more than two degrees above or below what we tell the computer we want that temperature to be it's going to tell us that there's a problem Hmm. um then filter flows depending on the system and sensitivities and whatnot um it's the same thing we say okay you know normally this runs at whatever 200 gallons a minute Mm -hmm. So if you get to 150, there's a problem, tell us. Or hmm. if you get to 300, there's a problem, tell yeah. us. Um, and then a lot of them also the levels, if yeah. the level's too low or whatever. So the technician on duty, the primary, will have that phone, and they get notifications throughout the day. On top of that, we have a computer, and, and you go into the graphics page, and we could bring up any system in the building hmm. and take a look at it and at the minimum know how much flow is going through it and what temperature it is. That's interesting. So larger and more complex, then it gets more and more. More and more things. I can't tell you how many times I've done a water change with like slightly warmer water, and then someone immediately knows mm-hmm. and calls me, and it's like, "What's happening out in Mountain Frogs?" So I'm, like, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean yeah. it. But it's awesome because if something was going wrong, that would be Instantly yeah. Be known. But yeah. then usually, if I forget to tell you guys I'm doing that, then I'm just like, "I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to worry anyone about what's going on up here." Yeah, and we adjust the thresholds based on the sensitivity of the animals, That's right? True. Some yeah. are going to handle a little better. Yeah. Or, or like a mammal not. is going to be just yeah, fine. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, if they, I think uh, seals is like 62. I think is our we call it set point, our target mm-hmm. temperature. So you know, seals is at 64 for a little yeah. bit. They're, They'll be fine. Or whatever. Um, but the mountain frogs, especially because they're so at risk, yeah, we we monitor them yeah. pretty closely, very closely, yeah. And I'm so sorry for all the times you've had to call. <laughs> You're not Aaron, the only one. <laughs> Aaron, what's going on? I'm like, I'm sorry, I was doing a water change and I forgot. Um, well, I know that we just reopened, or we just reopened. I guess is true. Reopened, our, reimagined, yeah. reimagined mm-hmm. our Southern California gallery. Um, what involvement did you have in construction of the new gallery? Uh, <laughs> wow. Um, so this was, it was kind of fun on, honestly, um, this was the first time I got to design, um, not design the tank. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was given, um, the tank parameters for, Mm -hmm. um, I think beauty in the deep is the Mm -hmm. name of it. I was given the tank parameters. So how many gallons, Mm -hmm. um, what, if they were going to run a sump and then they, it was like, okay, now make it work. So we went out and it's not just me. It's, you know, sitting down with the mm-hmm. team and conversations. And so we start to figure out how much flow we need to run through there. Okay. Um, on our perspective, a lot of that flow is how much do we need to turn over that tank to properly filter yeah. it? Right. Um, so, you know, those animals that happens to be a, a, a coral tank. Mm-hmm. So they need a little bit more flow. 
but our focus on that is mostly like how much do we need to turn on a filter mm-hmm. and then whatever you know there was some requests um for some com- components from the husbandry team so they gave it to this and then we start with a line drawing so we literally take a piece of paper paper and map the way our um the water is going to flow through the tank through the filters through the hmm. pump well it's tank pumps filter um that one has a bio tower and a protein skimmer um and then back into the tank so we we just it's it's not like okay in three feet we're going to do that it's just literally yeah uh, this is the route it's yeah. going to take and then we go into the space and start imagining what it's going to look like mm-hmm. and then order all our stuff so uh, we did that um i was kind of asked to lead that tank mm-hmm. um and then Neil led the oil grass, mm-hmm. our, one of our other tech three. And Josh, our supervisor, did the um, oil rig is, I think, did the same. Mm-hmm. And then uh, seagrass, marine meadow, meadows is the name. Mm-hmm. Josh led that one. So, and when you do the big build, you kind of need a point person. Yeah. Like, we definitely work together. Yeah. Like, we mm-hmm. all complement each other. Um, mm-hmm. But you need the point person to have a vision. Yeah. So, we did that. We ordered our components, um, most of them anyway. And then when the tanks got here, we started putting them together. Mm -hmm. I mean, attaching things, gluing it together, uh, laying it out, trying to figure out how it works. And How to get really big tanks into really small spaces. How to get really big, heavy tanks into really small spaces. I heard with the eelgrass tank in Mm -hmm. particular that um, there was, once it was sort of in the building... Mm-hmm. Getting it onto where it was going to eventually sit was interesting. I heard that involved some soap. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was some soap. Yeah. What happened there? Yeah, so um, Marine Meadows yep. is the new name, right? Um, that tank's 30 feet long. Yeah, it's a big tank. It's I beautiful. think five feet wide. It's, it is. It's mm-hmm. amazing. Um, and very heavy. Yeah. <laughs> so it wanted to stick to the concrete pad. So, oh, I see. Um, Tom actually came up with the idea to use soap and it breaks the friction up a little yeah. bit. And so we spread soap on the concrete <laughs> and then slid 3000 pounds of tank yeah. mm-hmm. by, you know, you have to push it. Yeah. You get mm-hmm. to the point where you just have to literally yeah. lean on it and push it. Yep. And it slid pretty well. I mean, you know, I tried to do slip and slide, but they said that was a good idea. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful exhibit. Definitely. I heard about Kind of getting it in there and seems like it was well worth yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it a couple you know, hours it took to scoot it in yeah mm-hmm. it, it's like anything you know in the moment sometimes it's frustrating yeah but yeah. you know it's really cool to go back and look and see yeah. you know and it's not just us it's we we got the water moving through it yeah and then mm-hmm. husbandry came through and made a beautiful exhibit yeah and, you know it's it's wild to think too you know we're an aquarium that's 25 years old we have a couple of stories here we are redoing the bottom floor yeah <laughs> and we kind of you know starting over from scratch so it's not like we could get a crane to just put yeah it in lift there a tank easily. wouldn't that like, be nice yeah. yeah that would have been the first round of the aquarium being built i, I think there's a lot of sadly cranes. no no nope. <laughs> we got a roof now yeah yeah <laughs> can't just knock down just... the sea lion tunnel to put a new tank in i guess yep. well we did I mean, we didn't knock it down, but when I we first did. started, we drained that. Oh, we, yeah. That was when you first started? That was, yeah, I was still we pretty did that, exhibit. that That was that. in between my internship and when I got hired. And mm-hmm. so I was an intern and I saw one exhibit, came back a few day, or a few years later, and I was like, what's happening? <laughs> Why is this so here? different it's in so here? Nice. Yeah. And yeah. that seemed like it would have been a really big project, too. Yeah, that was huge. It was kind of cool seeing it It was empty. done pretty quickly, too, from what I remember. Like, yeah. For a whole new exhibit to be... No, uh, Exhibit to like be a fully renovation, renovated. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, that company that mm-hmm. we contract with that does a lot of our rock work does mm-hmm. great work and they yeah. move. So, but that that tunnel part is actually two pieces of acrylic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so they had to strap it and hold it in. Because it's it, held by the water pressure, right? Like out partially. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's designed partially to hold the water pressure and then it's it's basically siliconed in. Yeah. So, in, so in cool. fact, that's one of the life support things is when that leaks, we have to dive I remember. Yeah. I remember you guys diving that. in there, and then the sea lions were like, what is all this stuff you're doing in here? And yeah. this being a little bit of a nuisance, but that's okay. Yeah. Diving's part of the job, Diving's too. part of life support. Yes, it that's is. That's awesome. Yeah, it Getting is. Getting in there and fixing and... And fixing being, yeah. and figuring. And so, because silicone only lasts so long, mm-hmm. and that's our seam. So, that's one of the things that we've started to take over. Um, 
or they I haven't dove here yet. I mm. just got certified and haven't had my Yay. turn yet. That's so. awesome. Madeline too. But not um, yet, almost. Oh, sorry, I lied. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Close. But uh, that or just inspections. They yeah. do a lot of checkout dives or on occasion they actually um my husband drills more but they'll drill holes in in like trop mm-hmm. yeah to put the corals to put in. the corals yeah. and stuff mm-hmm. so or buff acrylic you know yep. we buffed out otters when we buffed all the acrylic in otters yeah. in the it otters looks, it looks great that was when we were closed during covid yeah. we would gate the otters back and we had like several life support staff come in in this little raft in the yeah, it was a, you guys had ever raft. seen the otter mm-hmm. exhibit it doesn't look like a raft will fit in there but there's just all these people on a raft just like buffing and then mm-hmm. as you buff you push away from the wall and so they have to like just keep coming back mm-hmm. towards the acrylic it was fun to watch yeah and it looked really nice for a little bit yeah. and then the otters decided it was there. time to really yeah. wreak some havoc again and it still looks nicer mm-hmm. but man the otters really do I some damage yeah. appreciate that definitely getting some good photos <laughs> and i know reed doesn't appreciate the otters just destroying <laughs> no, everything was... he does yeah. <laughs> well, right that... behind you just... <laughs> <laughs> the, the challenge of acrylic it's very very strong yeah right as far as like holding back yeah, yeah. all that water weight it's not gonna crack but it's soft yeah mm-hmm. so i mean yeah it it doesn't take a lot and otters have good nails good Our nails. sea lions do it too mm-hmm. it's That's part. true their it teeth is, will sometimes yeah, if they're it is part of it yeah um but it's you know you can't put glass on that size yeah and, and you so. also can't expect to have animals in an exhibit and have them not be animals and do the things that they're doing and so everything is cyclical and maintenance for the reason of hey they're gonna do weird stuff so we just have to be on top of yeah. it <laughs> yeah. i mean yeah it's just part of it yeah it was kind of fun <laughs> I actually really liked seeing you guys all in a raft in there because it was yeah. fun to work with you. Guys. <laughs> at, at, at some point, I was on a ladder in there. I was in a wetsuit on a ladder working, bucking, yeah. and the yellowtail kept coming up and really? biting my leg. Like, and they don't they respond do to, please no. stop. Yeah. They just keep doing it. Well, they're underwater, so they actually couldn't hear you. But if you yelled directly into if the water, then maybe... I was yeah, trying sure really hard understand. not to put my face in the water. <laughs> Especially otters. It's all fur down there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, my last question about SoCal is like, that was a huge project. It took mm-hmm. months and months and months from planning to, you know, getting all the tanks in place and making sure everything was ready. What is the most fulfilling part? Like once you are done and once you can step back and take a look, what do you like the most about that? Yeah, it was, I think the best part, there was... Um, it was like two weeks ago. Okay. I think we had just opened. It was right before we did like the Saturday kind of soft opening. Mm-hmm. It was a Thursday before that. And there was, I don't know who, Josh was here and a couple of us mm-hmm. were here. It was super cool. Like we all just kind of, because um, Josh, Josh had said earlier that day, he said, you know, I realized we're done when we say we're done. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Everything was running. You know, there's, there's going to be tweaks on that for sure. months. That's yeah. how it goes. Mm-hmm. But Everything was running. It was sustainable for animals. Yeah. Like, like it was there. Um, there were animals already getting in there and stuff. And so we went to see that side because we don't look at that. We don't get to see that side. I mean, yeah. we can. We, mm-hmm. They don't. We're not prohibited. <laughs> but, but that's not Stay our job. Stay behind this. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the joke is that we're kind of not friendly, so we stay behind the scenes. But <laughs> I disagree. Um, you know, our, our job is behind the scenes and we focus mm-hmm. on that. So sometimes we forget to look at the front of the what scenes. we're contributing yeah. to. And there was a moment where and it was, I think, my favorite moment of that, um, where we did have that. Like we all went out and we were just looking and we paused at like what we contributed mm-hmm. to. And it was super cool. That is pretty That's cool. Such a cool, cool feeling, cool. I'm sure. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. I mean, you know, it's fun. And my kids have been through and it's like, you know, and I hear them tell their friends like my dad did that. Oh, so, that's really you know, cute. It's kind of cool. I love that. That's but awesome. it's not, I mean, I, I, it's not me. It's all of us. Yeah, it, it's it a really great is. team. It yeah, is. And nothing th- of that scale could be done by one individual person. You know, everything has to be done as a team. And yeah, I, that's a really cool feeling to just stand there with the people that worked so hard for months with you. Yeah. And to be able to be like, we did this. It's yeah. done. We can do other stuff for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I am I am truly honored to work with this team. Like oh. because we complement. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's times when any job, right, you get stuck. Yeah. You know, you've been plumbing and cutting pipes for days yeah. and you get stuck and you can't even see where you're going. Yeah. And someone will walk in, just do that. And then you can keep going. It's so again. clear all of a sudden. Yeah. Like, oh, or, thank goodness. Yeah. Or we'll take over for each other. Yeah. Sometimes it's like just 
you know, I know you need to walk yeah. or, or there's things I'm not good at that other people are, you know? And so, you know, we just take over and step in and it's really cool. That's awesome. Well, that was a really good note to end on sort of the main body of the episode, but we do have some questions <laughs> that our social media <laughs> Um, listeners would like to ask you. So Madeline's going to take over a little bit and ask you some of these questions. Some of them are great. <laughs> There's some really, I mean, in social media, Instagram, you always show up and ask some really thought-provoking questions. We're very appreciative of it. Um, did you have any pets growing up that led you to kind of want to study and build and work in this industry? Uh, yeah. Well, in the, yeah, I, I mean, we always had dogs, of course, mm-hmm. but I've always been in water and yeah. around water and outside and doing things. So like, yeah, and I think I all, it was natural for me to start mm-hmm. doing aquariums. Awesome. I can't tell you. I mean, when I was living at home at one point where I had some money to spend, I yeah. had like six tanks in my bedroom. Nice. Cool. So my future. Yeah, yeah. I'm, on, I'm well on there. my way. Yeah, uh, it's like the opposite of the crazy cat lady. I had like the crazy the sane fish, fish guy. guy. Yeah. The well, very the sane, sane fish, fish guy. guy. <laughs> Crazy cat lady, sane fish, fish man. Fish man. Nobody that. will Heaven. actually argue that I'm sane. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, what in your career here at the aquarium has been the most difficult exhibit to plumb? Wow. Um, I don't know. I mean, it. like every one of them, we hit points. Mm-hmm. But it's like what I was saying. We, we work together so mm-hmm. well. It's like... There's some, the, the oil rig exhibit, I didn't really plumb it, help some on it, mm-hmm. um, but amazes me because they put a lot of stuff in a very tight area. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, for me, it's like all of them at some point have made me absolutely crazy yeah. and say, I don't <laughs> want to do this anymore. Put I quit. Put your hands in the air. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. You know, um, but I, I can't think of like a specific one that was super. Yeah. Mm-hmm. aggravating you know beyond just the normal stuff normal aggravating <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> how do you measure things like salinity nitrates alkaline levels how do you do you alkalinity have? alkalinity, alkalinity. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> thank you and other important things we um open our email and get our water quality report yeah we're super lucky here we though. are yeah. we have a full lab mm-hmm. three lab technicians yep. and they monitor so and then uh, throughout the week, different things. There's a pretty consistent schedule of what's going to get med- mm-hmm. measured uh, and reported. So yeah. most of the time it's that. Mm-hmm. Um, we will, if we're having issues, go and record. Like DO is dissolved oxygen is mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. one thing. If we have issues with a piece of equipment that we can't repair right away, mm-hmm. we have handheld um, monitors. Um, and then, yeah, the salinity and the alkalinity is all through the lab, and we yeah. take the reports. And then make adjustments. And That's even needed. that, yeah, yeah, even that comes through generally a request. You know, we might mm-hmm. notice something and then talk to whoever's in charge of that exhibit mm-hmm. and say, hey, you know. What's going on? So, What's the most important thing to consider when constructing a habitat? <laughs> we, I mean, it comes down to what the animals need, mm-hmm. right? Um, so if we're, you know, we're going to look at if it's like a temperate or a cold water mm-hmm. or a tropical. Um, and then, you know, it's the size of that. So we could space things out. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the filtration is, you know, we have, we run, we try and run like a one to two time X. Like we're trying to turn that tank at least one or two times an hour. Yeah. The total volume yeah. of that tank at least minimum um, through the filtration. Uh, and then it's, it's going there, but then we have to look at like, like, Crabs is going to take a different amount of chilling, mm-hmm. right? Because they're uh, 48 degrees or 50 degrees. Or Oof. GPO, Giant Pacific Octopus, is 48 mm-hmm. degrees. So we're going to have to put a lot of chill water into that yeah. or into the, the um, chiller mechanism. Mm-hmm. Um, and it will require more um, than something that is more temperate. Yeah. You know? So it, it's – I don't know that there's one important, mm. right? I guess hold water Just, yeah. is very yeah. important. <laughs> first thing first, does it hold the water? <laughs> let's let's fix that. But yeah. yeah, it's it's because it's you know you have to look what's going in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's what it is. Just building to that species or that general yeah. uh, climate. I think yeah. it's probably. Mm-hmm. 
I do think with like the chilled water and stuff, sometimes I'll see Reed working in seemingly the most random part of the aquarium, like the middle of a hallway <laughs> and like on a ladder. And yeah. I'm just like, what are you doing? Like, there? how could that possibly be? But right. if you are ever visiting and you look up, there's pipes everywhere and everything mm-hmm. is really interconnected. And then it all, a lot of the filtration is outside in our service yard. Mm-hmm. And so because of that, it's your job to also know what is connected to And sure, and they're where. labeled, mm-hmm. but how to follow things and sort of like what to look for. And there's, yeah. there's, I think like two weeks ago, you were in the hallway on a ladder by our food kitchen. And I was like, hello, what is, <laughs> oh, what's yeah. happening up there? And that was for air conditioning purposes. Yes. See, it just it's so yeah. many things. What? <laughs> Do you have like a map of all of the pipes in the it's ceiling? It's in his brain. Um, brain my brain. <laughs> it's called Reed's brain. We have, so, <laughs> yeah, we have some blueprints. hmm and they show you some things. But one of the things I really, when we bring in new techs, um, and if I'm spend, when I'm spending time training them, yeah. one of the things, I, I feel like one of the most important things is learning how to trace systems. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So literally, you point at a pump, right? The water goes in, water goes yep. out. It's pretty, you could tell pretty quickly where the water goes in the pump, where it comes out. Yeah. And then I always, I because I do it, point at that and trace the plumbing with your finger how it goes and yeah. learn how it moves through the system mm-hmm. right and then if you we i try and start them on a smaller system that's how it worked work for me um some people will do the line drawings yeah. like i was talking about earlier um i don't love that <laughs> <laughs> but it's you know it needs to be done so yeah. i do a lot of it with my finger mm-hmm. and at some points you you know it goes in the wall there yeah. mm-hmm. and it comes out the wall there yeah. mm-hmm. so it must run over that office yeah. or yeah. through here or whatever because mm-hmm. i know it's moving that way yeah. and it goes mm-hmm. so there are some guesses there's schematics somewhere but usually in the moment you're just kind of pointing and walking yeah. around and following something yeah around. and it's weird because if you're looking at the pipes for whatever reason your mouth falls open every time <laughs> So you're walking around with your mouth gaping open, pointing, pointing at the sky. ceiling. There goes life support. Which is There's why our reputation again. was is. But the what you're asking about the yeah. we were working on, our the cooling for the building, yeah. and the cooling for the animals is the same system. Mm. So um, it's a big we we chill water down. We have at any given time. When everyone's working and happy, Mm -hmm. we have 42 degree water coming from our plant pumping throughout the building. And then we run valves in different places on each system or or in um, they're called air handlers. Um, And that's we blow air through it Mm -hmm. or we have plates and one side is that really cold water Mm -hmm. and the other side is the system water. Mm -hmm. And that's how we control the temperature for those animals. Oh, that's really cool. So it goes in hand in hand. Yeah. Um, okay, last question is, if we had an un- unlimited budget and space, what, let me start over. If we had an unlimited budget and space wasn't an issue, what exhibit would you like to build? What would you put in it? Yeah. What would I, I think what would I put in it, I don't know if I'd want to build it. <laughs> <laughs> Two but, different things. Like, okay. I, I've always what would you loved like to sharks. project manage? Like, yeah. I think sharks mm-hmm. are super cool. Mm-hmm. Um, like, that's part of the reason why I wanted to dive here, so I could yeah. swim sharks. Yeah. Um, so it'd be awesome to have, like, a massive shark yeah. exhibit mm-hmm. um like unlimited i don't know that i necessarily want to build it um, <laughs> it's it's the bigger the pipe yeah. the harder it is to glue mm-hmm. and gluing is a chemical reaction right mm-hmm. and it wants to so you you put the pipe together and then it starts to kind of melt and causes and it pushes back out mm-hmm. and the bigger the pipe the harder you have to push yeah. back in mm-hmm. I'm not little, and sometimes I have to lay on them to hold in place. Just like a lot of manual labor to build. Yeah, it's exhausting, and that's for like a four or six inch pipe. Yeah. A big, big shark exhibit is like ten, twelve, fourteen inch pipe. Yeah. Yeah. You're just getting pushed back. Yeah, I mean, you have to you have to use mechanical forces to hold them. I mean, it would be super cool to contribute, but I wouldn't wouldn't be sad if someone did. Someone, did someone built it, it for you. I could you. sit yeah. back and appreciate yeah. and do yeah. maintain. There you yeah. go. That's awesome. Cool. That's all of our social media questions. Thanks, Reed. This yeah. is, I have learned so much about your job and I already thought I had a decent <laughs> understanding of it. And there is so much more that you guys do. And I mean, the life support is sort of like the backbone of the aquarium, you know, like maybe underappreciated when people are talking about the organs of the aquarium, like there's a heart, there's a brain, mm-hmm. but the backbone, you're supporting everything that we do. Support. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I guess name. if you, yeah, if you just, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
<laughs> but it is awesome what you guys are doing, and we really do have a cool team. Um, I feel bad every time I have to call you to be like, I blew something up, but someone always comes and fixes it. And <laughs> what an amazing resource to have on hand 24-7 yeah, to lucky. know everything about yeah. what we're doing well, here. And don't feel bad when you blow it up. We are professional grumblers, but we actually <laughs> most of the time enjoy <laughs> fixing it. I think Reed just likes coming over to the frog areas and then also seeing frogs mm -hmm. while fixing well, things. Well, yeah, there's, you know. There's frogs. That's a good yeah. view. That's a good view. Mm -hmm. You can check it out, you know. It's just what I have to crawl into really small spaces. <laughs> no, the favorite game in life sport is to see what we could stuff 6-3 of Reed into. <laughs> <laughs> Go, go, go. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's awesome. Thank you so much for this awesome interview. I mean, yeah, I, this has been great. I've learned so much. I didn't know most of that stuff, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And yeah. I think we got to highlight, you know, something that literally supports all of yeah. the animals Next that Next time you're at the aquarium, definitely look up, check out those pipes. <laughs> and then see Reed following yeah, exactly. with his finger <laughs> his mouth in the middle of the hole. Open. <laughs> and if you see oh, a 6'3 man, yeah. 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 perfect. <laughs> cool. Thanks so much, Reed. Awesome. Thank you. Aquarium of the Pacific is brought to you by Aquarium of the Pacific, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. In 2023, the aquarium celebrates 25 years of connecting millions of people worldwide to the beauty and wonder of our ocean planet. Head to aquariumofpacific.org to learn more about our 25th anniversary celebration. Keep up with the aquarium on social media at Aquarium Pacific on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. This podcast is produced by Aaron Lundy, Madeline Walden, and Scott Shaw. Our music is by Andrew Reitzma, and our podcast art is by Brandy Kenny. Special thanks to Cecile Fisher, Anissa Valles, and our audiovisual and education departments, and to all of our amazing podcast guests for taking time out of their day to talk about the important work that they do. Podcific wouldn't be possible without the support of the aquarium's donors, members, guests, and supporters. Thanks for listening.